Quantum mechanics, the theory governing the microscopic realm, is a strange and wonderful world, full of mysteries and paradoxes that challenge our understanding. It operates on principles that defy our everyday intuitions, born from a world dominated by classical physics, where objects have definite positions and velocities. At the heart of this strangeness lies the wave function, a mathematical entity describing the state of a quantum system, encapsulating all possible outcomes. Unlike the deterministic laws of classical physics, the wave function only provides probabilities of finding a particle at a particular location, making the quantum world inherently uncertain. The Copenhagen interpretation, developed by Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg in the 1920s, is the most widely accepted interpretation of quantum mechanics, shaping our modern understanding. It embraces this inherent probabilistic nature of the quantum world, suggesting that reality itself is fundamentally uncertain until measured. Before a measurement is made, a particle exists in a superposition of states, a sort of quantum limbo where it doesn't have a definite position, momentum, or energy, existing in multiple possibilities simultaneously. It is only upon observation, the act of measuring one of these properties, that the wave function is said to collapse, forcing the particle into a definite state, a single reality. This interpretation suggests that the act of measurement fundamentally alters the system being observed, intertwining the observer with the observed. The observer doesn't merely record a pre-existing reality but actively participates in shaping it, blurring the line between observer and participant. Imagine a coin spinning in the air, a simple yet profound analogy. Before it lands it exists in a superposition of heads and tails, embodying the essence of quantum uncertainty. The act of observing the coin landing forces it into one state or another, collapsing the superposition into a definite outcome. The Copenhagen interpretation, while successful in explaining many experimental results, does not provide a clear mechanism for this collapse, leaving room for debate and exploration. How does the wave function collapse? What constitutes an observation? These questions remain at the forefront of quantum mechanics. These questions have plagued physicists and philosophers for decades, leading to alternative interpretations of quantum mechanics, each offering a unique perspective on the nature of reality. One of the most significant challenges to the Copenhagen interpretation is the ambiguous definition of observation or measurement. What distinguishes a measurement from any other interaction? This question has puzzled scientists for decades. Does it require a conscious observer or can a simple measuring device trigger wave function collapse? The debate continues. The Copenhagen interpretation doesn't provide a satisfactory answer to this question, leaving many physicists searching for clarity. It draws a somewhat arbitrary line between the macroscopic world of observers and the microscopic world of quantum systems, creating a divide that is hard to reconcile. This lack of clarity has led to the infamous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, which vividly illustrates the problem. Imagine a cat inside a box with a vial of poison that could be released by a quantum event, like the decay of an atom. The scenario becomes even more perplexing. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, until the box is opened, the cat exists in a superposition of being both alive and dead, a state that defies common sense. Only upon observation, opening the box, does the wave function collapse determining the cat's fate. This act of observation is crucial. This thought experiment highlights the absurdity of applying the Copenhagen interpretation to macroscopic systems, where everyday logic seems to break down. It seems counterintuitive that the cat's life or death depends on a conscious observer, challenging our understanding of reality. This ambiguity in defining observation has fueled the search for alternative interpretations that provide a more concrete and objective description of wave function collapse, pushing the boundaries of quantum theory. Furthermore, the Copenhagen interpretation struggles to explain how wave functions interact with each other, adding another layer of complexity. If a measurement causes a collapse, what happens when two quantum systems, each in a superposition of states, interact with each other? This question remains open. Does the wave function of one system collapse the other, or do they exist in a joint superposition until a measurement is made on the combined system? The mystery deepens. These questions highlight the limitations of the Copenhagen interpretation and its struggle to provide a complete and consistent picture of the quantum world, leaving much to be explored.
Objective collapse theories attempt to address the measurement problem by proposing modifications to the Schrodinger equation, the fundamental equation governing the evolution of the wave function. These modifications introduce nonlinear terms that cause the wave function to spontaneously collapse, independent of any observer or measurement. One such theory suggests that the collapse is triggered by the curvature of space-time itself. As the wave function spreads out over larger distances, the difference in gravitational pull across its extent could cause it to collapse. This implies a deep connection between quantum mechanics and general relativity, Einstein's theory of gravity. Another proposal posits that wave function collapse is an inherent property of particle systems. As the number of particles in a system increases, the probability of a collapse increases proportionally. This would explain why macroscopic objects composed of a vast number of particles are never found in a superposition of states. These objective collapse theories have the advantage of removing the observer-dependent aspect of wave function collapse, making it an inherent property of the quantum system itself. They also offer testable predictions. For instance, if collapse is caused by gravity, then experiments with increasingly massive quantum systems should eventually observe deviations from standard quantum mechanics. While these theories are appealing, they are still speculative and lack experimental verification. However, the search for objective collapse mechanisms highlights the ongoing effort to find a more complete and satisfying interpretation of quantum mechanics. Section 4. The EPR Paradox and the Quest for Hidden Variables in 1935, Albert Einstein, Boris Podolsky, and Nathan Rosen, often referred to as EPR, devised a thought experiment that challenged the completeness of quantum mechanics. This experiment was a significant moment in the history of physics as it questioned the very foundations of the quantum theory that had been developed over the previous decades. The EPR paradox, as it came to be known, argued that quantum mechanics couldn't be the whole story and that there must be hidden variables, yet unknown factors, that determine the outcome of a measurement. These hidden variables, they proposed, would restore a sense of determinism to the quantum world, which seemed to be inherently probabilistic. The paradox involves two entangled particles, particles linked in such a way that they share the same fate, even when separated by a large distance. This entanglement means that the state of one particle is directly related to the state of the other, no matter how far apart they are. Imagine two coins flipped simultaneously, guaranteed to land on opposite sides. This analogy helps to illustrate the concept of entanglement in a more tangible way. If one coin lands on heads, you instantly know the other is tails, even if they are miles apart. This instantaneous knowledge is what makes entanglement so intriguing and puzzling. In the quantum world, this entanglement leads to seemingly spookier consequences. The particles seem to communicate instantaneously, defying our usual understanding of space and time. Measuring the property of one entangled particle instantly determines the corresponding property of the other, even if they are light years away. This phenomenon has been confirmed by numerous experiments and remains one of the most fascinating aspects of quantum mechanics. This instantaneous correlation seems to violate Einstein's theory of relativity, which prohibits information from traveling faster than the speed of light. The apparent contradiction between quantum mechanics and relativity has been a major topic of debate and research. The EPR paradox questioned the completeness of quantum mechanics. It suggested that our understanding of the quantum world was incomplete and that there might be deeper layers of reality yet to be discovered. Einstein believed that the instantaneous correlation implied the existence of hidden variables, properties not described by quantum mechanics, that predetermined the outcome of the measurement. He was convinced that a more complete theory would eventually be found. However, subsequent experiments, notably those based on Bell's theorem, have shown that local hidden variable theories, those where information is localized and cannot travel faster than light, cannot reproduce the predictions of quantum mechanics. These experiments have provided strong evidence against the idea of local hidden variables. While the EPR paradox did not disprove quantum mechanics, it highlighted the profound non-locality inherent in the theory. This non-locality means that particles can be correlated in ways that classical physics cannot explain. It forced physicists to confront the bizarre implications of entanglement and the limitations of our classical intuitions in grasping the complexities of the quantum world. The EPR paradox remains a cornerstone in the ongoing quest to understand the true nature of reality. 
Section 5 Retrocausality, when tomorrow determines today. The concept of retrocausality, the idea that the future can influence the past, might seem like science fiction, but it has been proposed as a way to resolve some of the puzzles in quantum mechanics. This counterintuitive notion suggests that events in the future can send signals back in time, influencing the outcome of events in the past. One of the most intriguing interpretations invoking retrocausality is the transactional interpretation, developed by John Kramer. It envisions quantum interactions as a handshake between the past and the future. When a quantum event occurs, it sends out an offer wave traveling forward in time and a confirmation wave traveling backward in time. Imagine throwing a ball across a room. In the transactional interpretation, the act of throwing the ball sends out an offer wave into the future, and the ball's eventual landing sends a confirmation wave back to the past. The interaction between these waves determines the ball's trajectory. This interpretation offers a way to understand quantum entanglement without violating relativity. The instantaneous correlation between entangled particles is not due to faster-than-light communication, but rather a result of this pre-arranged handshake between the past and the future. While the transactional interpretation provides an elegant explanation for some quantum phenomena, it requires us to rethink our fundamental understanding of causality. The idea that the future can influence the past challenges our deeply held intuitions about the flow of time and the nature of reality itself.